let's have a look at some of the mechanisms for how polymers form. And before we do that, we need to um, define how that process occurs. And we use the word polymerization to mean how two monomers and ultimately many monomers join together. So polymerization is the process of joining monomers together to form long chains or what we call polymers. Now there are two types of polymerization reactions. The first one is an addition polymerization where we get the addition of alkenes or alkyne molecules to form much longer and larger molecules. And our second type of polymerization reaction is what we call a condensation polymerization reaction. And this one produces water as well as our polymer. So let's look a bit more in detail at the first of those types of reactions. So we're looking at our addition polymerization. And it has three steps. It has an initiation, a propagation, and a termination step involved in the process. So our first step is what we call the initi initiation, and that's a trigger for the reaction to join the monomers together. And what's often used is a halide, and that halide is heated to give us two radicals. So the R indicates that we've got a radical with um, one extra or an, a free electron. And this radical is then put in the presence of our monomer unit, in this case we've got ethene, and it reacts readily with that double bond. So we form our radical monomer complex. And what we find is the, um, the free electron is transferred from the R, from our radical, through to the other end to our CH2 group. And that means that this end will now be more reactive in the process. So we've got quite a tight bond between our carbon and um, radical, but this, pro this, this end is now free to bond as well because it's a radical. And this allows us to move into the second stage of addition polymerization, which is called the propagation step. So we start with our molecule from the first step. In the presence of our monomer unit, we will then form two units. So we'll form what's called a dimer. And once again, our, um, our radical that started at this end is extended out to the end of the chain. Now this process can keep going and keep going until we run out of ethene. And then we, then we move into the last stage, which we call the termination stage for our addition polymerization. And for this stage, we get we often find that we have two molecules of our lengthened polymer and they come into the presence of each other. Both of them have the radical end and that end bonds together. So we form from one of them, from one of our units, we form a bond with another unit and that completes our polymer. So you'll notice that we have um, our R group at either end and that's what we find with our polymers. So if we just summarise this process, we start with an unsaturated bond. In this case I've got my ethene and ultimately we get all saturated bonds in the process. Because we've got an R group at either end, it's not going to be reactive anymore or not going to readily react with anything. Now this polymer unit can be hundreds of thousands of monomers in length. Now some examples of addition polymerization or some polymers that are quite common are Teflon, which is a carbon bonded to two fluorines, carbon bonded to two fluorines. So we've substituted our um, two hydrogens for two fluorines and we form a compound called Teflon when it's polymerized. We've also got another um, quite common molecule, polyvinyl chloride. So our vinyl molecule will be a double bonded carbon to carbon. Instead of having two hydrogens off this second carbon, we substitute for one chlorine. And our monomer unit is our CH2CHCl unit. 
and if we polymerize that, we form polyvinyl chloride. Our third example, we've substituted a hydrogen for another methyl group. So we've actually got one, two, three carbons in here, so it's a propyl group. So when we polymerize this monomer, we form what's called polypropylene. 